are over 11 million people with disabilities in the UK. And with an ageing population, this figure is set to rise. Not all disability is visible. It can mean many things, from mobility and sensory impairment to mental well-being. In Britain, those with disabilities have the same desire, the means and the ability as anyone else to go out, travel, visit, consume and spend. But there are barriers, physical and social, that get in the way. When a barrier stops someone from being able to participate as others do, they become disabled. I have a number of impairments, mobility impairment, dexterity impairment, uh, so I am disabled. But as far as I'm concerned, there's not a lot wrong with me. It's the way that certain things in society is set up to exclude me. Random ramps, uh, really long winding routes around department stores and hospitals and excruciatingly heavy doors. So really, that's not my problem, but it is a problem for me. In a recent survey, 40% of those with a disability said they'd experienced difficulties in accessing goods and services over a 12-month period. 25% felt the discrimination they'd experienced was directly related to their impairment. The main issues were public transport, lack of accessible facilities, getting into buildings, difficulty getting round, and patronising or inappropriate language. But society is shifting. The London 2012 Paralympic Games changed perceptions and many disabled people have noticed. What we wanted to achieve with the Paralympic Games last summer in London was not only a sensational sporting event, but to use the power of the Paralympic Games to fundamentally change attitudes towards and opportunities for disabled people in sport, but wider than that, in education, in employment, and right across society. The research that we did throughout the project and after the Games demonstrates that we were able to achieve that. So it's important that everybody grasps this opportunity created by the Paralympic Games in 2012, and we don't let it just get swept away. But there's evidence that shrewd businesses are grabbing the opportunity to appeal to the disability market. Demonstrating inclusiveness isn't just ethically and legally important, it makes fantastic business sense too. Disabled consumers have an estimated disposable income of £80 billion each year in the UK alone. What's more, they search out products, services and venues that demonstrate they have the access they need. Like everyone else, I've got a certain amount of money to spend and I do like going out and about, either on my own or with friends. And we go to all sorts of places, um, whether it's um, the, the theatre or art galleries, go to museums and go shopping. If I go somewhere new, I really do have to um, put in a bit of effort on finding out whether it's going to be accessible, whether there's going to be steps, a sleep slope, um, whether I'm going to be able to park, which is really important, um, or, and whether, whether I'm going to get something to eat, whether I can use the toilets, all those things um, have to work for me. And if they don't, I just don't go. And when you appeal directly to this market, you attract others too. That's because people with disabilities are more likely to bring friends, families and carers with them. But conversely, when someone comes up against barriers, physical or emotional, they do not return. Statistically, someone with a disability is less likely to complain because complaining seldom works. But they do tell friends and family. And because many of those with disabilities tend to be active consumers of new technology and are often computer savvy, negative messages can spread quickly on social networks and message boards. 
There is no one-size-fits-all solution. Disability covers a whole range of impairments, physical, sensory and mental. You'll need to assess your facilities from different angles. Take a good look at what you have to offer. What are your accessible features? Is your signage clear and simple? Are there barriers that exclude certain people? What are the alternatives? How good is your lighting? Do your walls contrast with the floor? What sensory features do you have? Are your guides available in large print? Are you making the most of new technology? What about staff attitude? This has an impact on disabled people across the spectrum, including those with hidden and learning impairments. Are your teams polite, helpful and sensitive? Do they have disability awareness training? Don't make assumptions. Treat everyone with respect. Ask if you can help and listen to people's needs. When I go to a pub or a restaurant, I find it's a really good idea to speak to the waiter or whoever's in charge and tell them the kind of thing that I would need. So I can't make eye contact with anybody, so I can't pull them back again once they've left my table. Um, so I tend to arrange things like, uh, you know, would you come back and check in with me every 10 minutes or so? Because I do like a, a, the odd beer from time to time. So, um, it's, but it's not the same for everybody. Other people might find that really a pain, someone checking in on themselves. And so, so I think it's always best to ask someone what their individual preferences are. So you've invested considerable amounts of time, effort and money into making yourselves as accessible as possible. But what are you doing to get the message out there? If you want to attract the disability market, you need to say what you have to offer. What's more, very few businesses have been astute enough to market themselves effectively to disabled consumers. So why not gain the competitive edge and reap the rewards? Get your message out there, invite people in. If they have a fantastic experience, you'll find customers with disabilities are extremely loyal. They'll spread the word and return time and time again.